Happy Hallow's Eve, viewers. Shadow Joker here. And it's, as I stated in the intro, obviously, that time of year, Halloween. My personal favorite holiday, which makes it kind of strange, considering if it's my favorite holiday, why did it take me two years to finally get around to making a Halloween special? And I say, shut up. I'm just stupid, okay? But, yeah, it's, it's Halloween now, so let's talk about some spooky stuff. I you had a lot to talk about. I could do Scariest Enemies. E even though I, I say I have a lot to talk about, I'm only going to mention one because I want to give away like a hundred potential different Halloween specials. I want there to be some surprise. But I had a lot to talk about this year and I decided, you know, let's do some spooky levels. And well, it could once again, I could talk about the spooky obstacles in the form of enemies. I'd figure I talk about the spookiest stages or levels. Since you have to traverse these places, and a good scary level, fear makes the player fearful just from playing the level, not even taking enemies into account. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Couple of disclaimers. As is one, I'm titling the spookiest levels for a reason. Not all of the choices that I picked for this list could be seen as conventionally scary. So, I guess wouldn't make that all that much sense to call it scariest levels. Neither yeah, some of these levels scare me. Obviously, fear is a very subjective thing. One thing that scares me might just not inflict you with any form of terror, and vice versa. So, more than usually, I ask that you respect my opinions on this, though Considering I'm a public figure, kudos to you if you decide to make fun of me for my video game fears in the comments. And as per usual, Countdown Fair, one end creeper franchise and only from games I played. Anyway, let's get started. Metroid is not a series I talk about all that much. It's not that I think the series is bad, it's just... Compared to most series I talk about, I have played relatively few games in the franchise. And thus, since my knowledge on it is far less vast compared to something like Pokemon, it's just not as likely to make any a list. But... Well, in the few games that I have played in the series, Metroid Fusion makes this list and for good reason. The Bio Research Lab is freaking horrifying. It's the best way I really have to describe it is just a rundown space station taken over by some of the deadliest creatures in the known galaxy. Who outright wrecks Samus in the opening cutscene? Not to mention the SAX. It's so scary! Do the most diabolical shit like bring Ridley back to life. And I know it's not new to the series. But he's still creepy. Like he's canonically dead at this point since this is the last game in the franchise. Unless Prime 4 wants to take place after this or something. But who knows if Prime 4 will even be a thing at this point. 
I sure as hell don't. So, if it's so freaking creepy, why is it at number 10? Surely it should, at the very least, be in the top 5. Well, like I said, I, I'm i not that knowledgeable on Metroid, and thus I haven't played many of the games. I do like the games that I've played, but due to me not really having that big an interest in the series, it just... I'd much rather put uh, stuff that interests me a lot more on higher spots on the list. No disrespect to Metroid Fusion though, because this game doesn't pull any punches in the Fear Factor. Kanye Cannon... Oh boy. Let's, well, before I get into what we're talking about, Zelda, yeah, another series I don't actually talk that much about. It's, just like Metroid, I don't dislike the series. I like it a lot, but... I'm not as big a fan of it as others. So, once again... That's why it's not a series I talk that a lot about. Anyway, Iconic Canyon. And I was thinking for this list, I'm like, yeah, there's probably going to be a Zelda entry. That just seems good. So I was brainstorming. I was like, Shadow Temple. Uh, other scary places in Zelda. Uh, uh. Uh, ancient cistern, I guess. That that's somewhat scary. But uh I can't really think of anything. There's gotta be a Zelda anchor on this list. Then I remember the Kana Kenya, I'm like, oh yeah! That place is terrifying. Basic backstory of Ikanya Canyon is it's a kingdom with war and bloodshed and all of that, and now the dead are all me. I mean, I guess it's thematically appropriate because of all the bloodshed, but. Bro, the dead roam it, and like, there were wars here. So, like, it's not just dead. It's mega ultra dead. This place is scary, man. Like, you have a paranormal researcher and his daughter being terrified by Gibbetos. Max McGuire's mask, three deads. Com evil ghost composer who sold his soul to the devil. This game was targeted towards children. And why the characters sold their soul to the goddamn devil? Are we serious here, Nintendo? <sighs> um. Places and therapy. What is it about the bio research lab? Reason it's not higher. It's because I'm far from the world's biggest Zelda advocate. If I was, then you'd bet your ass it'd be a lot higher. Uh, coming up next on this list is uh. The Nether from Minecraft. Another game I don't talk about. I don't know why it took me this long to realize this game is utterly not not getting this list is utterly filled with games I barely talk about. Well, Minecraft was huge to me as a child, so why don't I talk about it? Just getting that out of the way. Oh no. You see, 
Uh, it would be an all-time favorite for me. It's really good. But I, I guess don't play it as much as I used to. So I'm kind of out of whack with how the game is in its modern state. More of a classic Minecraft guy. Not not to say I hate new Minecraft updates or saying stuff like, You're adding too many mobs. No, no, it's, it's fine. Yes, I, I haven't really played that much of Minecraft in a long ass time. But the Nether. You know, this game that is clearly targeted towards children. Let's put a level that is literally hell. They're not even trying to hide it. You thought the evil composer brother in Iconic Canyon was bad. Ugh. They just put hell itself as a level in a kid's game. And to make you have some pretty creepy enemies here. Zombie pigmen are, I guess, piglins now. Once again, I'm very out of the loop with modern Minecraft. So, yeah. They're fine, I guess. Then there's gas, which actually terrifies me as a kid. Like, I genuinely saw a gas for the first time when I was playing Minecraft. I dropped my controller and ran upstairs. That's how fucking scared I was of them, I swear. I can't have blazes, which... I never was, like, terrified of them, per se. Still didn't like them. They threw fireballs at me. What did I do? <laughs> and then you have weird skeletons, which can just leave me alone. Leave me alone, please. Please, please leave me alone. Um, anyway, there's not much else to say. Kind of covered my bases. It's very scary. Again, if I played this game more often, then it would be very high on the list. Next up on the list is Punking Goddamn Hill. Go for one of the scariest levels I've ever played. So, Punking Goddamn Hill. Now, the reason why this is on the list is it actually fits the more spooky theme than actually scaring. Be shitless. Genuinely a fun level to play. As much as I don't like Sonic Adventure 2. Like at all. I don't. I don't think it really does anything good in my opinion. Now Pumpkin Hill is an alright stick. And one that I will definitely talk about in the Halloween video. The one complaint gets to get out of the way, though, for an obviously Halloween-inspired level. Why did they choose fucking rap music? Well, like, you're kidding me. When I'm going trick-or-treating with my, my friends, the first music that I think, oh, let's not play some Halloween music. Let's, let's play fucking Eminem. I don't know, do, do you guys like Kanye? I, I really don't follow rap, so I guess pick the first artist that came to mind. I don't know, who you guys like? Oh, them in the comments, I guess? I probably won't listen to them since rap just doesn't really appeal to me, but now we're getting off topic. And, uh... The looks are very festive, as you can... See, like, got goddamn jack o -lantern pumpkins. Granted, they look like goddamn PNGs. But at least they fit the mood. 
And once again, it, it's very long the list because don't talk about Sonic all that much. But also because of the rap music. Looks, seriously, you made a Halloween level and you picked rap music. Like, like <laughs> I want to say that's the worst design decision that anyone's ever had. But purely for the comical elements, I, I, I think it's genius. Oh, yeah. Yeah, next next time around Halloween night, I'll I'll just go go and listen to some M&M. And then next up is the world of nothing from Super Paper Mario. This level terrifies me, just in its concept. A world that has been utterly destroyed. This is what happens to all of them if you fail. The only reason I'm not saying much is... Well, there isn't much to say that people who've covered this level haven't already said. Thematically, it's beautiful. And terrifying at the same time. I genuinely feel like there's no better space level to just scare the player. Of course, I have things that scare me more. It's only number five on the list. Granted, this is a good good place to be. Or, actually, no, it's number six. I don't know how to count, apparently. But what else is new? But that being said... I have two major complaints, which is what brings it down on the list a bit. One, why did it have to be this long? Seriously, even with using carry, the fastest way to move in the whole game, it takes way too long without anything happening. I know that's kind of the point, but... You couldn't have at least tried. And secondly, as much as I do kind of thank him for sending me out of the deep void and depression that was the uh, first playthrough I ever had of this game. Mr. L has the worst case of emotional whiplash I have ever seen. Normally I love him, but. Like, like, if you want emotional whiplash, like, no, 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 don't do emotional whiplash here. It's awful design. Being said, I still think the level does a fantastic job at terrifying the player. Well done, Super Paper Mario. Well done. Plants vs. Zombies, at least to me, was always an instant classic. Ever since the young ages, it was one of my, well, my young ages, I'm still relatively young still, but when it was like, when I was like really little, it was one of the first games I really played and got into, and I loved it. I, it's so damn good, holds up today, and I, I love everything about it. But enough gashing about one of my favorite nostalgic games. It's always been a classic to me. Ever since me and my cousins first discovered it on the PC that many years ago. And if and if any game has ever been my go-to game to play on Halloween, ever since that those days, it's been Plants vs. Zombies. I really gotta stop Getting nostalgic. I gotta talk about the fog levels. Design wise, these are easily the worst levels in the game, and as much as I say, I think it's pretty much perfect. I will admit the fog levels suck from a gameplay perspective. On a personal level and kind of scaring me wise, you ain't too bad, fog levels. You ain't too bad. 
last personal story, I've needed glasses since I was a young child, so any sort of map or level in video games where you have even more limited vision than you do normally with the camera, just, it, it just, due to my experience as a young child of needing glasses for so many years and ever since I was young, It just brings out an innate fear in me. So, in short, that's part of why these pod levels are here. Our normal circumstances, I'd say, <laughs> these are on top 10 spookiest video game levels get real, but my list, my experiences, so on and so forth. Honestly, it's not even the levels themselves that are spooky. It's just the concept of a game where you fight off zombies giving me limited view. There's not much to say. It's very much a personal fear of mine. And so, I doubt anyone else would feel the same way about these levels. And I can kind of agree in hindsight, maybe I put them a little too high. But personal experience goes a long way for me. So that's why it's this high on the list. Now, Chrono Trigger. A game I really like. One of the best RPGs of all bloody time. Honestly, I'm surprised people don't talk about more. I mean... Fucking great! Why do negative five people talk about this game outside of it was good at time? But frustrations with Chrono Trigger fading into obscurity outside of people remembering it for being good. I need to stop getting off topic. What level did I choose? There were actually yes, in concept and ideas. A decent number of choices I had. I could have gone with the um end of time because on my first playthrough it did actually kind of scare me a bit. We're at the end of bloody time. But due to the music and it being your hub, over over the course of playing the game, I had a more quaint feel towards it. Now, a lot of people would be asking me, okay then, how about, uh, Magus' Castle? I do love Magus' Castle. But I didn't pick it. Honestly, it never really gave me a really spooky feeling. More of a grand and adventurous feeling. The Black Omen, however, scares me. Now, not actually playing it. It's sure some of the enemies are pretty powerful, and I remember Queen Zeal stumped me on my first playthrough because I had not to use Rog. That was bad, but wh whatever. Let's stop getting off topic here. Why did I pick the Black Omen for the list? Just the idea that's a conduit to what the eventual world ender will be, essentially fueling his power, and bloody um, sheer fact that just appears and do the time wibbly wobbly junky wonky stuff. Everyone thinks it's a normal occurrence. Ah, oh, yeah, you know that uh, giant death laser machine that uh, just appeared in the sky. It's been there since I was a young lad. Because that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll see. You yes, I think you guys are starting to see on this list that a lot of things here scare me thematically more so than anything else. 
And I'm going to say what I said about the pot calls. Maybe I put the black on a little too high. I think maybe I should put maybe the Nether Recon Canyon in their spots. But... My list, my rules, you know. Benny and the Ink Machine. Another game that I just... I don't talk about all that much. But I love... It's... Definitely top 10 horror games for me. But. Let's go on to the main area of the game. Joey Drew Studios. This is top 3. And for damn good reason. It's a rundown. Cartoon. Making place. I don't know the official term. There even is one. And just from the beginning of, like, stuff that would promote the cartoons that were being made at the time is still up. That alone got me thinking. Not to mention the first bloody chapter, you see one of the two main characters in his chest is ripped open. What the bloody hell have you been doing? Drew! What the hell? What the hell is this place? In the first chapter and see freaking Boris ripped open I wanted to leave, but now we keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. And this place, despite being run down due to the graphical style, is still really looking nice. Good job, Meatly. And you see all these ink Creatures, even ignoring the main characters. And it's just... It's unsettling, man. And there's ink writing on the walls, just as in a murder mystery. You'd see... People... Murder victims... Writing out bloody messages. It... it it's unsettling. And I feel like a part of it that gets me is these monsters that you fight were designed to be icons for children and entertain them. That's what scares me. Turning something beloved from your childhood into something horrifying. I, outside of the unknown, I don't think there is a bigger fear. Using someone's past against them, any way, shape, or form is horrifying. Not to mention we, we have the bendy chase scenes which are tense as hell. Morris is a good guy and so is Alice, but they're also evil versions, apparently. It, it's very confusing. It, Joey Drew Studios is the ma is a masterpiece of a level. It scares me to my core. It's got good puzzles. Just ignoring the good gameplay elements. The type of fear it uses, it uses masterfully. The Meatly knew what they were doing. And it makes me happy. Because this game is probably one of the best horrors I've played in a long ass time. I'm blaming this placement on the list purely for my recent playthrough of the, the, the last main series game at least. Out of the ones that exist during the making of this video that I haven't played. I am glad I played Pokemon Black and White too. I say really didn't want to go Lavender to Hound for this list. It's such a goddamn cliche. And before playing it, I heard that the strange house was hella scary. So I made the genius decision to play it late at night. 
Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bloody genius. I knew what I was getting into, and oh, oh man. Moving furniture, and then later on you see a ghost girl. Oh no, please, 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 spare me. And then we find out that Dark Cry killed people. This is the first time the actual games that I think a Pokemon has been canonically said to have killed a human. That's terrifying. And who's to say that it just stopped at the, this little girl or, and her family? There's a, ta there's a town nearby. Who's to say you didn't just go anyone who wandered in and saw? <sighs> this place is real, real scary. I, and I love it for that. It's, it's great. I love it so damn much. But I don't have much to say. I, I just wish the area went on for a bit longer and was required. And now, for the final level on this list. I'm gonna go ahead and give it to my favorite franchise of all time for the second countdown in a row. Guys, I'm not even trying to hide my bias towards FNAF, so like, guys don't like it, you, you, you guys probably should just stop watching me in that case. And that's for bedroom though. I, I've mentioned the places terrifying me earlier on this list. But this truly terrifies me. It's, it's the one video game level where I where I truly feel fear. I I can't even overstate it. I've had nightmares of Five Nights at Freddy's 4. It's that scary to me. And so, just in general, I don't think I could have picked a better first place contender. Reminiscent of the first game, we have all four main animatronics. Coming from at you from different angles pretty much every second of the night. And for the first time ever, you truly feel helpless. You had your power to meter to fight back in the first game. You had your music box and mask. Which were your bread and butter in the second. You had your audio lures and vents. In the third. This here. You kind of have to hope that the animatronics just decide to piss off and let you live. It's that scary. It's nightmares personified. Another fear of mine. Actually having to live through your nightmares. That idea. Just go away. Go away! And those were my words. These levels truly horrified me. Well, most of them. Some of them were fun, like Pumpkin Hill, but... For the most part, glad how this list turned out. And hey, why don't you share me your spookiest levels in the comments below. This has been Shadow Joker, take care, and happy Halloween everyone.